today is Sunday. It's about 5.30 and I'm getting ready to go to the park to do our little walk and talk. And um, I just didn't feel like walking there today, but we're gonna do some, you know, we're walking when we get here. I have my bird seed to see if the geese are here. And um, then we're gonna go to the lake for a little bit. I found this new place. I was looking up hiking places near me. I bet you there's no friggin' parking spots. And um, there is, there is one in my town. Well, there's two. One of them um, closes at five o'clock, so it's already closed. Oh, I gotta hurry up because of lighting. Hold on, let me fix this. Okay, so there's the playground there. There's a lot of kids playing. And um, yeah, now it's like really bright and stuff. So maybe in a few minutes, I'll um, go to that, drive to that one hiking place if I can find it, you know? I was looking at like the directions and stuff and like the reviews, a lot of people were saying that it was hard to find, but you know, it's there. So that's what we'll do. Tomorrow I have my rehab, the cardiac rehab. So I didn't go Friday because I think on my last vlog, I showed you where I got that booster shot and I started getting like the shot was up here, but right here, the red mark's going away. I don't even think it's red at all anymore. Like it was right here. It's a little bit, but not too bad. And that thing turned red and my arm hurt for like three days. Oh my goodness. So I didn't want to go to the, you know, and do all that stuff, especially with the arm thing and all that stuff. So I'll go Monday. Yeah, I keep looking because it's clashing red in this hot pink. <laughs> but, like I said, it's all for a review. I love it here. I see a lot of the comments, like you guys tell me how peaceful and quiet it is. This is what pisses me off. There's dog poop right here. Like, if you want to take your dog, bring a bag or something and clean up after your dog. I think it's so ignorant. Anyway. That's my rant for the day. <laughs> also, I do get some comments and somebody um, DM'd me yesterday because I always say in my bag here, I carry my knife, my gun, and my mace. Okay, let me let this gentleman go by first. And the reason why I keep all three things, because say there's a dog, okay, that um, got loose and is going after to attack me. The first thing I'm gonna use is my mace. I keep that in my back pocket. If that's not working, or if somebody was coming to attack me, like this gentleman just walked by, what if he walked by and then he came and he attacked me? Um, well, I thought that was a B. Um, and so I'll start with my mace and move forward. And if I have to, if there was a bear or something, of course I'm gonna get my gun. So that's why I carry it so I can have different safety measures if I need it because sometimes maybe mace isn't strong enough and I need something else so because I'm not just going to go reach for my gun unless I had to and everything's licensed everything's good you know as far as that so anyway it's more for protection against like a loose dog or something like that that's what I always think and again you just never know I am I do walk by myself you know and when there's somebody that wants to get you that's what they target person that's by themselves, right? So I also wanted to talk about, let me see how I can fix this. I'm going to, this is a good place for you guys to see. There's like a lake behind me here. I don't know what you can see right there. And then right here, of course, is the lake. We have a really big lake in the town that I live in. Okay, let me set this up really quick. I don't know what it is. For the past few days as well, ever since I had my booster, I'm getting that shortness of breath again. So that's why like, I can only walk a little bit and then I have to take a break, which is fine. I just like getting out of the house, you know? So I wanted to talk about my, my video, the yesterday's video, um, if you didn't see it. I titled it like YouTube drama, airing it all out. And it was about forgiveness and I want to thank you guys for all of the positive comments. Like I was a little nervous to post it because the meaning behind that video was just about forgiveness. And I used Alex um, as an example. After I made the video, I did tell her before I even posted it, hey, look, I made this video, you know, whatever the case may be. But 
you know, and I used her as an example. And I told her I, you know, used her as an example because I want to show people like if anybody knew me, especially a year, two years ago, the dislike I had for that girl. And, uh, you know, you'd be surprised. And, you know, and I just wanted to show you guys like, hey, if I can forgive and move on, you know, you can too. And I, and I want to tell you guys like how much it meant to me, like how even health wise, my mental health wise, you know, because you do after a while, you get tired of being angry guys. You just do. It's like, then you start thinking, what the hell was I even angry about? <laughs> like at the time I had a reason because I was going through so much stuff in my personal life. And it was like, are you kidding me? Like, but do you understand? Like, I look at things now. I'm telling you, when you have a near-death experience or something traumatic happens to you, you really look at things differently. If you ever watch these videos that say, oh, I had this near-death experience and now, like, you know, things have changed. I, I totally understand now because I thought to myself, like, God forbid something was to happen to me that day, right? I don't want... You know, I always ask God for forgiveness, right? If you hear the wind and stuff, you know, uh, it's just really nice out today. And I think it's going to storm. Um, and I don't want him to ever say to me, well, you didn't forgive this, 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 and this. Why should I forgive you? Right? And then I also looked at it like I held on to this anger for so long. And it was really like, seriously, there was so much other things going on in life that is like, crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I just look at life differently. And like I said, just because you forgive does not mean you have to have those people in your life. It is for you. Forgiving somebody is for you, not for them. If that makes any kind of sense, you know, get a sip of my water. Okay. So let's do some walking. I bought this thing from Amazon. I will link it down below. And what it is, is you can make it into a tripod like this, right? And then you can close the tripod up and of course shorten it and then you can hold it as a selfie stick. And it's also very strong, like it has some weight to it. If you need to knock somebody out with it, you can do that as well, you know what I mean? All right, yeah, and like I said, then I can, um, you know, I could just hold it. And, I, and I'm serious, this has a lot of weight to it. And I think it goes up to like almost five foot. I wanna say maybe 48 inches. Yeah, because 50 inches is five foot, right? Um, and so it goes pretty tall and I got it because, so that way if I want to sit down at the bench and then just instead of like holding it as I'm talking and then it's shaking and all that kind of stuff, but I really like it. And like I said, as I'm walking sometimes, like when I walk to the park or to the lake, I have this in my hand as I'm walking. One, for exercise, I switch hands, you know, and two, for protection as well, you know what I mean? Oh, wow, that's so pretty. Let me just show you what I say. I always find new things to look at when I come, and it's just so peaceful. Do you see the rocks and stuff right there? It's just really pretty. I wish, like, you guys can see this in real life. I'm not going to go too far up. And then there's trails like this that you can go down. But because I'm by myself, I, I'd rather go with somebody with me. Even though I have all this stuff, I mean, still scares me, you know? Um, like the mace, it's right in my back pocket, I could take it. But if I would have to use, get my knife or something, I have to go turn this around, go in my bag, and I don't wanna hold it as I'm walking, um, you know, a knife or anything, I don't know, maybe I should, but. So I wanted to tell you this too. Um, another reason why I talked about forgiveness and, and different things. I wanna do a little story time with you. I asked my daughter if it was okay if I shared it and she said yes. And I'm not gonna say any, you know, like use names or anything. So, you know, when my daughter had her open heart surgery and um, well, first we, oh, we she just in case if you don't know, she had a, a, what you call a pulmonary embolism in her lung. And then she got transferred to Cooper Hospital because that's more of, a, I think it's a level one or something. It's like a trauma hospital and we, that, that's all we, that we knew at that time. So she was getting transferred. We got there like three in the morning because they said there's a few things they can do for that. They can take something that goes in their groin or somewhere I forget. And it's like a needle and it like punk, punctures 
the blood clot. Or they can give an IV to, you know, thin out the blood clot, whatever the case may be, like medicine. There was a few things, and worst case scenario, they said surgery. So, but most, they were more optimistic that she didn't need surgery. So when we get to the hospital, like 3 a.m., that hospital in ICU, the one, the main ho the hospital we were at, if you're in ICU, you can stay there 24 seven, like a parent or whatever. Uh, you can have up to two guests. There, even in ICU, you cannot stay the night. You have to leave visiting hours, okay? Which is, I think, like eight or 8.30, I can't remember. Um, so when we got there and they would not let me even stay, I'm like, look, we just got here at 3 a.m., you know? But so me and my husband, slept in the lobby like literally in the lobby where people were coming off the elevator like watching us but i didn't care you know but 3 a.m visiting hours were closed it was more like staff so at 8 30 in the morning the doctor and a nurse well actually it was the nurse that said you know called my name it was like parents of you know because lexi is her nickname and so I was like, oh, visiting hours don't start till 10. So that was weird, but I was glad. I was like, oh, they're letting me in there because maybe they felt bad. <laughs> you know, we slept out there. And um, my husband was just gonna stay in the lobby until 10. And the nurse says, well, if your husband wants to come, he can come. And I seen her face, but I didn't pay no mind. Now my daughter was only 19 at the time, right? And so when we, um, go in, I, they, they're doing ultrasounds of her heart, like in her room. And I, all I hear is the ultrasound ladies doing it. There's a doctor and then another doctor. And I hear them t talking and I heard them say the right ventricle. Well, I already knew something was wrong. Okay. But I didn't know what. So I'm like, what's going on? And because Lexi is over 18, you know, they talked to her and Lexi was like, you can tell my mom, you know? And so that's when they said, well, we did an ultrasound on the heart. She has one on the lung and on, she has two on her heart and the one it's on the right side and the one like they're trying to move to go on top of the other one. And she was in heart failure. That's why her blood pressure was going up and down her heart rate. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so when the uh, doctor had came in, hello, hello. good. So when the doctor had came in, he says, well, I, I'm getting all upset again because every time I think about it, so let me get, make, let me stop myself so I can tell the, the correct story. So the doctor says to me, we need to uh, go take her to the OR to get surgery. And I go, what? Now my daughter's on the phone texting. She doesn't, she's not realizing like what's going on. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he says, he explained again what was going on. Now, I still did not realize they're talking about open heart surgery because I was in shock. I'm thinking she's just gonna get like some, you know, something very easy to get rid of that blood clot. And uh, he says, look, we don't have time to prep her. We're prepping her in the OR, we're taking her right now. And he said, this is an emergency, we have to do it now. And I look at Lexi and Lexi's crying. And I go over to Lexi, I'm very spiritual, you know. I always had faith. I always raised my kids like that. And I, Lexi's crying. I said, Lexi, do you believe in God? Do you have faith? And she goes, yes, mommy. I said, then it's okay to be concerned, but you don't worry, God has your back. And at that time, my grandma had, had just passed a few months prior. I knew my mom was dying, right? But I knew my grandma had passed. And I said, grandma, I, and they called her my mom. I said, my mom has your back. Everything's gonna be okay. And, um, I remember they, I walked her, they allowed me to walk all the way till they got her in the elevator because they took her while she was in the hospital bed. They just wheeled the hospital bed. And I'm still not realizing open heart surgery. This is how like in shock I was. I cannot make this up. And I go past the nurse's station, said, mom, are you gonna, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. And she goes, you know, I've never had a patient so young. She's only 19 and I'm, I'm so sorry. And then my husband says, Ann, do you realize what's going on? I'm like, no. He goes, she's getting ready to have open heart surgery. And that's when I was like, what? Even though I know they pulled her down to the, I knew they were taking her to the OR, they told me, but I, I didn't understand. I was in shock. 
And um, I'm gonna walk this way for a little bit. I go into that bathroom and if anybody knows me, I'm obsessed with bleach. I do not like, like I'm, I'm always cleaning, you know, I'm like germaphobe. And I go into that bathroom, I put my pocketbook on the floor and I literally fall to my knees on my dirty bathroom floor. And I prayed, I says, grandma, please, you know, and I said, all the angels, everything, please, please, please. You know, I, I, I've only shared this story, I think once. My daughter was a twin and uh, my other daughter passed away. She lived for an hour and she passed. And so I says, my God, you took one. Please don't take my, don't take my daughter, please, please, you know. And um, in my ear, I mean, I didn't physically hear anybody or see anybody, but I, I it, it's like prayers, prayers, ask for prayers. So that's when I did my live stream. And I'm like asking for prayers. I will link that video down below. I still can't watch it, but I did. I was in shock. You can see how much shock I was in. And anyway, it, it was, they said it would last about three hours. It was going on three and a half hours. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And finally they came out about three and a half hours. And he shows me, the doctor shows a picture how much. He said they took 10 centimeters. They were like, it's a lot. You know, um, you know, like the first hospital, if they would have sent her home, she could have went to sleep. And I mean, it could have been bad. I don't even know why I got into that story because it wasn't, uh, anyway, my daughter's friends um, had came up there. There's this one friend who would come up there almost every day, a, a female friend. And um, she had went to school with my daughter and they were very, very close. And sometimes like if I was going up there because every few days I would go home, take a shower, um, film a few videos, like three, four videos, and then um, come back to the place before my daughter, like I would leave at one o'clock in the afternoon and one o'clock in the morning when she would fall asleep, go all the way home, took about 25 minutes to get home, get in the shower, put makeup on, film videos. Then I would take my makeup off, put like sweatpants on like comfy clothes, like what I have on now and head back up there and get there about 530 in the morning before she woke up. And I would do that every few days. And then unless and then sometimes like her friend would say, can I ride with you up there or whatever? Um, and the nurse, like I told you, you're not allowed to stay the night, but the nurse, um, because she knew me and my husband and what happened and they felt bad because my daughter was only 19, they let us come, you know, and stay the night. And anyway, um, so she came up there, her friend came up there all the time, was always there. And then if you don't know, so, when they went in through her groin, um, what happened was uh, a couple weeks later, I'm telling you this for a reason, when, when my daughter got discharged and stuff, um, her thing started coming over and got infected where she had to go back to the hospital and get operated again and then get this little sponge machine in there. And that blood infection could have stopped her heart and killed her right away. So in the month of October, I almost lost my daughter twice. Meanwhile, my mom was getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, so I was like, who do I choose, my mom or my daughter? Of course, I'm gonna choose my daughter. But when I tell you it was, I was going through some stuff and still filming and acting like everything was good, like that, I was on pilot, like, you know? And then so her friend, when that happened, would still come up there because she didn't have a car. I mean, sometimes she would catch the bus, you know? Well, about a month after my daughter came home, and I used to tell my daughter, that's how you know you have a good friend. A true friend will be with you through thick and thin, especially when you need them the most. Because my daughter was a miserable bitch, and she was, she was just mean and hurting and in pain, but she was in pain, and I knew that. So she was just mean to even her friends, you know? And so she got, my daughter started getting close to another friend that they went to school with, because you know, everybody at the woodwork was calling my daughter, are you okay, once they heard. And, uh, the one girl didn't like, let's name them. So Kathy is the one she just became friends with and Sally is the old friend. Sally and Kathy will say. Kathy didn't like Sally because Kathy was very jealous of Sally and was jealous of the relationship that Sally and like my daughter had. So Kathy would always talk mess and was like, oh, Sally kicked your back and Sally said this, Sally said that. So my daughter stopped being friendly with, um, Sally and Sally couldn't understand and then Sally got her feelings hurt because she was like I was always there for you blah 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 and hurt her feelings that she left her alone and I kept saying to Lexi like Lexi 
Sally was there almost every day. Like, where was your other friends at? Where was your family? Like, nobody, like, that's who you know has your back, you know? And um, I was like, you need to talk to her, find out what's going on. You know, get them all together because sometimes people exaggerate. We all know who that is, right? Even as adults, we go through that. So, oh, maybe uh, Kathy and Lexi were friends maybe a month, two months the most. And then they got into a fight. And then Kathy left her alone. And my daughter was left friendless. <laughs> like, let's be real, right? And... The reason why I'm sharing the story is because there are people that come, they're like vampires. They come in your life to suck out all the happiness because that's what they do. That's what they want. They're jealous of a friendship you have with somebody. They're jealous of your life. They want your life, whatever the case may be, your work, anything. And that's what they do. And then once Kathy got what she wanted, guess what she did? She bounced. And then like Lexi, she was just stuck without any friends at all. And Sally was still like real upset and stuff, you know? And so like they never, they became, they became friendly again, but it was never the same. And that's what I'm trying to say to, say to you guys. Like there are people out there that don't want you to be happy. And they want that negativity. Why? Because they are miserable. I'm gonna turn around because there's other people coming. They are miserable with themselves, with their life. And sometimes people act like they have the most perfect life, you know, like nothing's bothering them. Everything's fine, but that's not the truth. There's a lot of good actresses. Wasn't I a good actress? When I was dealing with everything I was dealing with, and even when my mom passed, I'm still making videos. The next day I'm making videos, but I'm crying myself every night because I, I didn't handle properly the grieving process and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm saying is, Nobody would really would have known what I was really going through. I always wanted, and then when I was separated from my husband, you guys didn't know that for a while until I shared it when we start going to marriage counseling and like, I wanted to drink, you know? So here I'm making videos, laughing and joking and like everything's okay. And back in my head, I'm crying myself to sleep. I'm miserable. I keep the devils in me like, go get a drink. You can drink, you'll be okay. One drink is okay. If you don't know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I cannot drink. And so like I'm saying, there's a lot of good actresses. And so not everybody has the right intention. And so when I share like forgiveness and you don't have to bring those people in your life and different things like that, I'm sharing this story too, to let you know, like guys, there are just negative people and miserable people. And I truly believe this, like the devil comes in all si shapes, sizes, forms. And sometimes the devil comes with a human form <laughs> to come in your life to cause chaos. And that could just be anything. It doesn't have to just be a friendship, anything. What I'm learning from my health experience and then things that I also went through, like I could have lost my daughter, losing my mom and grandma, my family. Like it's just my husband and my three kids. That's all that's in my life as far as family wise, you know? The people that are in your life that you care about, the people that are your friends are going to be there when you need them the most, when things are bad. There are a lot of times people are only in your life when there's the good times. That's the truth too. You know what I'm saying? So the people that are in your life, like I said, keep them around. You can get, you know, you get in arguments, even like friendships. I have a good friend, Lisa. Gosh, she was a subscriber. And then, um, we became friends. Um, I think I did like a collection video or maybe I got, it was a Morphe palette. It was the Morphe Rust palette and it just came out. I could, maybe I got it in a subscription box. I don't remember, but I had already had it, I think. Or I don't know, maybe I just used to, oh, I got bit by something, look. Oh, I'm allergic to bees and then any like little bug bite, I like flare up, you know? Anyway, um, and so she wanted the palette and she offered to pay for shipping and I'm like, no, you've been a supporter of mine for, you know, no, I, I, I wanna thank you and I'll send it to you. Anyway, and then we start talking little by here and then she had got my number and I mean she's like one of my best friends you know when my grandmother passed she's one of the first ones I called uh, when my grandmother was in the hospital we would literally FaceTime three four o'clock in the morning she stayed up and talked to me 
when my grandmother passed and the guilt that I had. Every day until sometimes four in the morning, she would talk to me, okay? Texting me every hour, are you okay? Even with Lexi, Lexi would have her migraines in the hospital, so she wanted everybody to be quiet. So she would do like little videos, so, so I couldn't talk, she couldn't, you know, cause I didn't wanna wake my daughter up. Or sometimes I would go like in the hallway and talk to her, but just to cheer me up. And one, one day we got into a little argument. Like it was something over stupid, like stupid thing. We both got our feelings hurt and I was so mad. I'm like, I can't believe she did this. And you know, she was mad. Like I can't, you know, whatever the case may be. And we didn't talk for like maybe four or five days. Well, this is when I got COVID. This is back in January. As soon as I put on my community post, Isaiah had COVID first, then I mine came positive like four or five days later. She immediately reached out to me because then it doesn't matter how upset you are. My friend is sick. Like, are you okay? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because yeah, you can have arguments with your friends and it, it, a friend, it's just like a relationship, right? And you're gonna have that, but why hold on to grudges? Why stay mad if it's not something that serious? You know, and we talk about it now. I was like, yeah, I remember saying this, 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 because I've always said I'm an Aries. So I am the type when something's bothering me, I vent. You know, I've always been like that. I can say what I want. I can be like that bitch, but nobody else is gonna say it, if that makes any sense. And um, again, we talked about it. We told the truth, we moved on. And actually that brought us closer. So we had one fight, five years, and um, I would do any uh, anything. If I had to, she was in a different state. If I had to take a plane or drive or catch a bus, I would go to her state if she wasn't speaking to me and something happened to say that relationship because she has been there through thick and thin. I have another really good friend, Jody. She lives in a different state. When... Um, I had that step put in when they transferred me to Philly. She literally was like, are you, cause my husband was with me of course, and he would stay the night and stuff. And she would say, do you need me to send, I don't know if it was Uber Eats or whatever the case may be. Do you need me to buy something and I'll send it to your house? Like, just give me your address. I mean, we weren't friends that long, but she was that concerned because she knows how I am with my kids. And so that I, she wanted to take the stress off of me. So I wouldn't worry, are they eating? Is everything okay? Like, do you know what I'm saying? There, people don't come like that a, a, a lot, you know? And it's like, so when I was going through some really hard times, she was there. And that's the people you need to keep in your life. And like I was trying to tell my daughter, those are the people you need to keep in your life. These other people that will pretend to be your friend. I could sit there and say, oh, I love you. You're my best friend. And then talk shit behind your back. You know, I want somebody in my life that when I'm going through something, they want to come to my house. They want to say, come on, let's go out. Let's get your mind off of things. Let's do this. Or are you okay? Or let's sit down and figure it out and see how we can fix this. You know, like if something was going on, just in general. That's, keep those people in your life and forgive. Let little things like stupid little arguments go and don't hold on to grudges. Now, if somebody keeps doing you dirty, yeah, you keep that in the back of your head and then sometimes you have to let them go, right? For your own peace. But you guys understand what I'm saying. Sometimes people get mad and then, you know, they say, I don't know. You guys know what I'm saying? How in the world? I'm even talking about this because this is not how it was supposed to go, <laughs> this video. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, it's Sunday and uh, I watch church. I either go there or I watch. Last week I watched and this time I watched. And for some reason, like I, when I watch church or, or when I'm stressed or going through things, I listen to my gospel music or watch church or whatever, or, or like an older one. And it makes me think. <laughs> So every Sunday when I say, oh, it's Sunday, a lot of times I'm probably going to be talking like, you know, like deep thoughts because that's just how I get, you know? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> to make another half hour video, that was my point from yesterday's video to learn to forgive. It'll help you out. It mentally, you will feel freer because you ever go to bed angry and then you wake up angry <laughs> and you're like, what? Or you go to bed and you wake up happy and your partner, whoever you're with, is in a bad mood and then puts you in a bad mood. But if you go to bed happy, 
a lot of times you wake up happy, right? And it's the same thing. When you don't have a lot of things to stress about over, you know, you can, you, you know, makes your day go by, makes your life a lot better. You know, I don't know. All right, I was going to, which I am going to do, I have bird seed on me. So I'm gonna get off of here, I'm gonna to walk to the car. I don't know how long this video is. I'll go to the lake, see if there's any geese there. If there is, I'll put on like at the end, you see me feeding the geese. And um, cause I, like I said, I don't wanna make these videos too long. Um, this week coming up will be a travel vlog, definitely. I took you guys to Atlantic City already. My next one will either be Wildwood, which if you're not from New Jersey, you don't know what that is, but it has a boardwalk in the beach or Ocean City, New Jersey. So that will come up this week. And uh, oh gosh, I just realized because this stick is heavy that I'm holding, the selfie stick. And so my arm gets tired. So when I'm editing, like I notice, like you guys are right up here and it's like a little too close. All right, guys, please like this video. It really does help me out or dislike it. That helps me out too. Like this video if you like these type of talks, if you like these very like serious combos. I mean, this is not what's gonna happen all the time. It's not always gonna be a serious combo probably every Sunday, but you know, it's gonna be positive and different things. But um, let me know, that way I know like if to share more story times with you guys and talk as I'm walking. Do you know what I mean? Like, let me know. So if I get a lot of likes, I know that you guys are liking that. Leave a comment, share some stories down below. Like, let me know, I love listening to you guys. Stay beautiful, stay healthy, stay blessed. No, I said that totally wrong. I have been messing up this outro like crazy lately. Let me start over. Stay beautiful, stay blessed, stay healthy, and most importantly, always stay you. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Why do I keep hitting myself? Every time I do that, I keep hitting my leg. Oh.